All right, welcome back to Mr. Donnan's Autodesk 3ds Max 2018 YouTube Classroom. Today is video number 30. Uh, we are going to talk about spline creation and modification today. So we're going to start with our standard setup, but we're going to actually throw a lot of it away. So hit Q, grab your cube, get rid of it, hit front, and we don't really need this background image either, so we can get rid of that. Um, also, I'm going to hit Shift F and maximize my screen. And I think we're in pretty good shape. Now today we are going to not create geometry. We are going to create this section here, which is shapes. You want shapes because we are going to create shapes. Now, shapes aren't 3D. They are 2D. So if I create a rectangle, it's 2D. And if I render it, you can't see it because generally shapes are invisible to 3D. So I'm going to hit F and get back to the front. You'll notice I have snapping on. If you don't have snapping on, um, go to snaps, make sure you're snapping to grid points. Um, we can turn vertex off and options, make sure it enable axis constraints is set up. Also, as usual, I've got my statistics set up with the number seven. Anyway, so when we create shapes, uh, we've got a bunch of different options. But today, what we're really going to worry about is the line tool. The line tool is really great because um, leave the initial creation methods the same, but we are going to click somewhere on the middle line, click once, and now if I drag around without clicking or holding the button, I just get a straight line. If I click again, I get another straight line. Again, another straight line. Again, and then I can actually go back to my original sp um, location, close spline, hit yes. So now I've created this uh, trapezoid. I think whatever so it doesn't matter because we don't need it we're deleting it the so what I've shown you is how to create hard corners by clicking and not dragging okay so and we close it hit yes now closing the spline can be important um, sometimes you don't really need it to be closed I'm gonna delete that <laughs> all right so Go, go back. We're going to go back into line. Um, and notice it says drag type. We have corner smooth and, and bezier. Bezier is when we click, all right, if, so I just uh, standard click. But if I click and drag, I get this wonderful curve shape, all right? And you can see, I'm going to turn snapping off for the moment so we can see a little better, how naturally smooth it is. Um, bezier was a French engineer that, uh, developed this system of splines um, and vertexes and, and spline shapes uh, in order to help design curvy cars. Um, and we use it in here to create shapes that are like smooth. Now we can have sharp edges as well uh, if we want. The, gen the generic way we create this is click once for a sharp edge and click and drag for a smooth edge. Now it's going to be smooth on the way in and smooth on the way out. So if we wanted to create like waves, all right, I'm going to click again, nice and smooth. If I click uh, like a standard click, and I click smooth, S uh, click and drag again, click and drag again, tap this time, click and drag again, click and drag again, and click and drag one more time, and then I can right click and that will be my end. So see how I created this sort of wave shape by tapping on the tips where I want it to be sharp and then clicking and dragging through. Now when I create these shapes, um, what, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm actually creating vertexes and segments and all of this together is called a spline. So if we look at this piece uh, under selection, under our modify tab, you can see we've got three different options. It's very similar to the, the geometry options we had earlier. We've got vertex, which are the actual points where I clicked on stuff. We've got segments, which you can hit number two and select. Segments are the, um, the lines between the vertexes. And then we have a spline, which is the entire line itself. So if I wanted to move this line, this entire spline, I could grab it by spline. It's kind of like grabbing by element. Um, and number two is kind of like grabbing by edge. And number one is grabbing vertexes. Now, the vertexes have a big impact on, well, everything has a big impact. But the vertexes themselves are how you're going to actually manipulate each particular um, sh segment. So each one of these vertexes can be one of five different types. You can use uh, bezier, corner. Bezier, a corner, 
smooth. Uh, so I guess there's four, and then you can reset tangents. Um, so a Bezier uh, vertex is a straight edge, straight edge control. And if you hit W, you can actually manipulate it. You can move the corner, the the vertex itself, and you can see it keeps nice smooth angles between it. Um, and you can push them in to reduce how much um, curve is being applied, or you can move it uh, further away and increase the amount of curve. So you can get some crazy edges, uh, crazy curves on there. Um, now that's a Bezier vertex. Now if you right click and use a Bezier corner, these now are broken. So I can make smooth inputs and smooth outputs, but have a lot more control. So before with these corners, these are just corners. But if I use Bezier corners, now I can actually adjust how wavy my corners are, right? So that means I can take this and get rid of it and just do it all with one, right? This is really, really a powerful uh, tool because what it does is it allows you to use less, less vertices but have more control. Um, so it's really a, a really interesting uh, system that at first is a little annoying because it's difficult to understand. Let's right click and convert this to a Bezier corner. Um, but you can, once you get the hang of it, you can do some amazing, amazing stuff with it. Um, I can even go to the point where I'm only, I've really only got like the primary point of the curve and then I've got the lower part and still get actually probably a better shape in general um, from it. I can adjust this here. Um, occasionally you will get, so this is a corner, a busy corner. Um, occasionally you will get um, tangents where you can't actually move them like you get difficulty moving them um, uh, that's wrong front um, there you go and you can reset your tangents to make sure that what you're what you're doing is is set now if you've got a corner between a corner you're not going to have a whole lot of uh, control through this section if you create this uh, and you make it smooth, what that does is it will just automatically blend the dif distance or difference between the two splines or segments coming in. Okay? So that will give you some control over that. But you can get locked like that. Um, if you create a Bezier, you're not going to have a whole lot of uh, control over that. There you go. There. Cool, so you should go ahead and take a few minutes and play with this um, and try and get your own waves so that they look pretty cool um, and that you have a lot of control over them. Remember, the more you pull this away, the more control you have over um, how much corner is getting applied. And you can always delete edges you don't want. Let me get rid of this other kidney bean thing. So I'm going to go back up here, delete that. Um, you should go ahead and play with this to try and get your uh, wave looking the way it is. And we're not actually turning this in today, but I do want to make sure that you understand the concept of creating this, uh, using this line tool, because it is extremely powerful. In the next video, we are actually going to talk about moving this further in 3D. Um, we can talk a little bit about it now. So if we go into the uh, line tool here and we hit the number one, we can grab these, these vertices and we can move them in and out as well. So before we were basically building them all on a plane and you'll notice that now I've got a much more like curvy process on how it's going to apply and you can actually adjust this as well. So you've got like a weird like corkscrew type thing. It's pretty cool. I kind of like it. Looks weird. Looks like uh, arcane missiles or something. Nerd alert. Anyway, so you got the idea, like a lightning bolt or something. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt. Um, anyway, so you've got this whole process, and you can adjust the ins and outs of it. So like from the front view, you can see that you can actually manipulate these and make them so they're kind of like crossing over each other, but still coming the same direction. Um, that's from the front, from the left view, um, and the top view. 
So now they're actually all kind of on top of each other because of many mess, but you get the point. Go ahead and play with that. Um, play with the tools, and then in the next video, we'll actually show you how to make a, uh, a shape out of that that will actually render. So I'll see you in five minutes or so while you play with that, and then in the next video, we'll do some cool stuff with it so we can see it in 3D. All right, see you next time.